Rachel Barenbaum, author of A Bend in the Stars. And today I'm here with Jennifer DeLeon, author of the incredible book, Don't Ask Me Where I'm From. This debut just dropped. It covers coming of age, love, it broke my heart, immigration, you name it, it's in there. Jen, tell us, what is your book about? Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Um, Don't Ask Me Where I'm From tells the story of 15-year-old Liliana Cruz, and she is bused to a new school in a suburb of Boston, and she's trying to fit in, and there's a whole lot going on in her life while she's doing it. So what are the things going on in her life? Give us some of those big themes. Yeah, so her dad, she thinks is missing, but she learns early on that that's not the case, but I don't want to give it away. Um, but it has to do with immigration. And um, she's got best friend drama, boy drama, and she's just kind of trying to find her place in this new school that is predominantly white, and she is Latina. One of the big themes of the book that I loved and also breaks my heart is code switching. Can you talk about that? Definitely. Liliana has to code switch big time. Um, she is new at this predominantly white and affluent school in Westburg, which is a fictional town. And she is, for the first time, kind of straddling two cultures. She has her Latina culture and her Central American culture and her urban culture from Boston. But now she's plopped in this suburb where mostly everyone is white. And she is navigating that space in terms of her voice, how she dresses, what she um, does and doesn't, um, you know, eat or bring to school or say in class. So she's, she's figuring out a lot. Another one of the scenes that really just broke my heart and grabbed me and kept me thinking for a long, long time was the scene when Liliana's in class and she's talking about uh, Central American immigration. And the teacher turns to her and she's the only non-white kid in the class and basically says, can you speak for all of the immigrants that are coming up <laughs> right through Mexico? Talk about that moment. Oh my gosh. So this moment is one that I've definitely had in my own life where I'm the only person of color in the class and we're talking about an issue like immigration and the teacher, in this case, the professor just kind of like tries not to look at you, but then bam, lands eyes on you. And suddenly you have 80 eyes staring at you and you're thinking what I am learning too. I'm in this class with an open notebook and I did the reading just like you, but I don't have a PhD in this. And I also don't have to sort of explain to everybody. Um, so I, I wanted to have this scene in the book because I just felt like it, it showed um, a very real way in which I think students of color sometimes are bearing a lot on their shoulders. You know, like they're, they're trying to learn their own history and at the same time they're being tapped to like explain the history um, to others. I just think you did it so well. You really oh, did. You, you captured that moment. So you have quite an impressive resume. Editor at Rise Latinas, assistant professor of creative writing, Grub Street board member, instructor, and now debut author. What kind of message do you have for writers who are just getting started? Oh my goodness. I, I feel like the message that I have is, I know everyone says this, read, 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 right? But I think the shift happened for me when I started reading like a writer. And so I started um, folding pages over or putting notes in their post-its and then typing out the passages that I admired into a Microsoft Word document. And so I have these documents for endings, for beginnings, for transitions, for um, having some historical information and, and how to, so basically I was just like pinching ways that I thought successful authors had done it on the page and then bringing it into a document so that I could reference it later or just read it later and feel inspired. What kind of advice do you have for new writers? For new writers, I feel like you have to go to Grub Street. I mean, that's just like what I tell everybody. I don't care where I see them, like Trader Joe's or the library, or I'm like, go to Grub Street. Um, because, you know, dreams have deadlines. So what do you want people to take away from your book? To be able to either see a mirror in this book and feel validated and, and feel recognized and seen, like, oh, I've had that experience too. 
or to see it as, um, you know, not a mirror, but something where it's more of a window and they're getting a glimpse into maybe a high school or a teenager's life, you know, that they don't have access to normally. But what I really want is for teens to feel fired up and like after they turn, you know, read the last page to feel like they can take on some form of activism or do something in their community or school to, to help fight injustice like Liliana does. Can you tell me how you are going to judge success? Um, I used to be a teacher in Boston Public Schools and with Teach for America. And so for me, I've been thinking about this. Like I just, I want this book to be in so many kids' hands, um, kids who really need it and they're, they're going to need it in different ways. But I just can't wait to do school visits, even if they're virtual. So Jen, you're hoping that this book will facilitate conversations uh, within families. Could you talk about that? Um, you know, in the book, Liliana is um, learning a lot about her history and how um, her family and her family's specific story fits into the larger narrative of her like extended family's story. And I think it's so important for young teens um, of every background to learn about their story and how it connects to um, to their family's history. So I hope that this is a book that can encourage readers to ask those questions of their parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles. Um, in the book, Liliana has a long talk with her aunt who's visiting from Guatemala. And I just, I, I wish I had had more conversations like that at her age, because I feel like I would have a stronger sense of self earlier in life. So it's something that I hope the book can help facilitate. Jen, thank you so much for joining me today. Congratulations. Don't ask me where I'm from. It's amazing. Maybe something.